In this video, we deploy an Azure NAT gateway. Hello everyone, I'm Travis and this is Reltos. If you've deployed a VM in Azure, you may have noticed by default, it gets access to the internet. Even if you don't give the VM a public IP address, it still has internet access. How is this possible? Azure provides default outbound internet access for VMs and other services that need internet access. If the resource has a public IP or is behind a firewall or load balancer, the traffic originates from that device. If that's not the case, Azure provides access by default. At times, we need a little bit more control over the public IP address traffic comes from. Azure has multiple ways to tackle this, load balancers and firewalls just mentioned, for example. In this video, we look at another option, the Azure NAT Gateway. Before we get started, please like, subscribe to the channel, and share with a friend. Check out my courses on Azure Virtual Desktop and Hybrid Windows AD and Azure AD Identities on Udemy.com. The links are below. And become a member of this channel. Your support is appreciated. Back to it. Let's say we had a couple application servers on an Azure subnet. These servers connect to an API over the internet. That API only allows connections from specific IP addresses. We could give the application servers a static IP address, but that won't scale well. Let's say we had to add more application servers. Now we have to update the API with the additional public IP addresses. Also, static public IP addresses in Azure aren't expensive, but they're also not free. We can simplify our configuration by adding a network address translation or NAT gateway. When a NAT gateway is attached to a subnet, all outbound traffic is routed through that gateway. The gateway has one or more public IP addresses associated with it. Now we can add or remove application servers and our external traffic is always sourced from the same public IP. Another example is with Azure Virtual Desktop. Without any networking changes, all session hosts have access to the internet by default with little control over what source IP traffic comes from. Some applications or online services may use external IP addresses for licensing. We can control the source IP with a NAT gateway. Although you may want to consider a firewall for a little bit more control over end user access to the internet, the NAT gateway is not a security service. Let's quickly review NAT, or more specifically Source Network Address Translation, or SNAT, and how it's used to allow multiple VMs to share public IPs to access the internet. A network connection opening a public website, for example, is referred to as a network flow. When a client accesses a website, there are a few pieces of networking information needed. The destination IP address of the website, the destination port, 80 or 443 for a website, the source IP address, and the source port. The source IP is a private IP address. The NAT gateway modifies the packet. The destination IP and port stay the same, but the source IP and port change to the public IP of the gateway. The gateway keeps a mapping of the IPs and ports, so when the request is returned, it passes the traffic back to the client. Some other things to keep in mind when planning and deploying a NAT gateway. They can be associated with one or more subnets, and subnets in a VNet can be associated with one or more NAT gateways. But a subnet cannot be associated with multiple NAT gateways. Also, basic resources such as basic IPs and basic load balancers aren't compatible with NAT gateways. If the subnet has basic resources on it, they need to be upgraded to standard or move to a different subnet. Let's take a look at how to deploy a NAT gateway from the portal next. Here we are in the portal. Search for NAT gateway from create a resource. We'll select NAT gateway. And there's only one plan. So we'll hit create. We'll create a new resource group for this NAT gateway. And next, give it a name. We'll select a region, and it should be in the same region as the VNet with the subnets we're gonna attach this to. Central US for this example. For a zonal gateway, select an availability zone. This option is for deployments where you may deploy multiple NAT gateways and want to control the zone for each. Leave it blank and it'll be assigned to a zone by Azure. One of the few settings we can change is the timeout. Leave it to four minutes unless you have a reason to set it to something different. Let's add an outbound IP next. 
The NAT gateway can support up to 50,000 concurrent connections for each public IP. That may sound like a lot, but a single web browser session may have many connections for content, images, and ads, and other things. We can select a prefix and have up to 16 public IP addresses for each NAT gateway. For this example, we'll create a single public IP address. Let's create a new IP. Also, we can use existing public IP addresses if one is available. It looks like we're limited to standard and static IPs. Give it a name and click OK. Let's go to subnets next. Select our virtual network. We only get virtual networks that are in the same region. It lists the subnets available for the NAT gateway. If you don't see your subnet on the list, make sure it meets the compatibility requirements listed on the screen. Select one or more subnets and go to tags. Add tags as needed and then go to review and create. Once validation passes, click create. And I'll pause here and come back once it's finished. That finished, let's go to the resource group next. Here it shows the NAT gateway and the public IP. Let's view the public IP address. Our public IP address ends in .128. That's how we create a NAT gateway and add it to a subnet. Next, let's log into a computer on a subnet not attached to the VNet gateway. Here we are at a computer on the subnet that's not attached to the NAT gateway. Let's open a web browser and get the computer's public IP address. Here it shows the public IP address is 40.77.8.149. That is not the same IP address as our NAT gateway. Let's go back to the Azure portal. Next, we'll update the subnet the computer is attached to so it uses the NAT gateway. Let's go into our VNet. From our VNet, we'll go into the subnets. And from here, we'll open up the subnet that we'll attach the NAT gateway to. Currently, the NAT gateway specifies none, so we can change that to our new NAT gateway. Also, we could move or change NAT gateways from here if we needed. Let's click Save. Let's go back to the computer on that subnet. Let's open up the web browser and go to a site that will give us our public IP. I'll use whatsmyip.org for this example. Now the public IP matches the public IP of our NAT gateway. And do note that you may need to close and reopen the web browser for this change to take effect. That is how we add an existing subnet to a NAT gateway. I hope this helps you better understand how to use an Azure NAT gateway. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and thanks for watching.